Hello, welcome again to the Django Beat channel. Uh, my name is Stuart Gauntlet. Today I'm going to be talking about gypsy picking again. Uh, but this time it's video two and we're talking about rule two. Now, um, if you haven't watched the previous video, which is rule one, I suggest you go back and have a look. I'm aware that a lot of people out there uh, don't uh, particularly appreciate talking about uh, there being rules to music. And I don't mean uh, uh, government, <laughs> I mean um, guidelines. Um, when you look at the playing of lots of um, people and you boil it down, certain things emerge. Um, also, for picking, particularly uh, for gypsy picking, uh, there are characteristics of gypsy picking which distinguish it from other types of uh, guitar playing, such as um, electric playing, um, jazz playing that you would learn at Berklee uh, School of Music in New York, for example. Uh, they use the alternate picking method there. Now, rule one, um, which you will hear John Jorgensen talk about, you will hear uh, many other players that teach online, they will talk about these rules. Um, well, rule one was that um, when you use a downstroke, it is always rest stroke. If you're not sure what that is, please watch the video before because this is this one is quite detailed and possibly longer than the others. I don't want to uh, make it too long here. So uh, once you've done that, come back and then then we'll, we'll continue. Yeah. Ru so rule two um, is that you always use a downstroke. Um, i.e. a rest stroke, when you change strings in Gypsy Jazz. Um, now, um, some people, I suppose, if they have come from uh, blues playing or electric guitar playing, um, don't really agree with this because their alternate picking methods are so programmed in that this feels very unnatural to them. But... Um, when you're in an acoustic setting and you're getting pretty much drowned out by other players uh, playing their rhythm, it's good to be able to use a, some techniques that make your notes stand out. And this is why gypsies pick like this. It's all about volume. So don't take my word for it. Go through, go to a few jams and uh, if, if you already play jazz and try to use your alternate picking method when you've got four or five guitar players around you. You'll realise that you you feel pretty quiet. Anyway, enough of that. Right. Um, okay. Changing string with a downstroke. This is okay when um, you have an even number of strikes per string. When you have an even number. Now, in the previous video, we did an exercise. One, two, three, four. 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 One two three 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 four. Four is an even number. Why is it okay? Why do I say even numbers? It's because of this. We're talking about picking. This is your pick. It has two sides. It's an even number. You can't you can't pick sideways. You can't. There's no third strike there. Um, it's down or up. Down or up. Um, and so why is that good? It is because when you have an even number of strikes per string. Down, up, down, up. The last strike is always the opposite of the first. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. When you're starting with a down stroke, it's pretty easy because down, up. The plectrum's now up and it's ready. It's away from the guitar and it's going to be able to just come back in and change string very easily. This is, applies when you're going in this direction or in that direction. Very easy. So you can use a very strong resting stroke and there's no problem whatsoever. Now, when you're going in this direction and you're using um, an odd number of strikes, now this goes against the construction of a plectrum. The construction of a plectrum is it has two sides, an even number, one, two, three. Now, this is different because the last strike in a set of three or five is always the same as the first. One, two, so it's down, up, down. One, two, three. So if you're changing string and you have to use a downstroke to change string, it means you have to double up. 
Now when you're going in this direction, we use three here. This is exercise two, by the way. Exercise one is in the previous video. So three, four, five, 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 three, four, five. In next middle, ring finger. Um, and you're going down, up, down, 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 down, up. In this direction, notice I'm not going down, up, down, and lifting this up. Down, up, down, up, down, down. I, I miss. I can't even do it. So, down, up, down. And it's already resting. Because we're doing a rest stroke, it's actually already resting on the next string. So you might as well just go down, up, down. And you just keep it there. Down, up, down, down, up. So in a sense, it's what you might call sweet picking. Except it's, uh, it's only done once in a while, perhaps, in, in this sort of, sort of context. Now that's all very well and good. Try doing the exercise the opposite way. So down, up, down, 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 down, up. You'll find occasionally down, up, down. Oh, you'll you'll sort of as you try to double up that strike and jump over the string to the next one, you occasionally will hit another string on the way. Um, it's not as efficient you're having to double up. Now, I, I often talk about why is this a problem? Well, it's a bit like walking versus hopping. You know, uh, hopping is 50% uh, less efficient than walking, isn't it? Because when you're walking, you're alternating your feet. When you're hopping, you're only using one. So this is gonna cause a problem with speed and fluidity when you're using descending structures, descending scales, descending arpeggios, descending runs of any sort of kind where you're picking every time you, you, you make a note. Um, but there are ways to get around it. Um, I'll add in a little maxim, I won't say a rule, but if you want um, to practice licks or arpeggios or anything that allows you to build up your ability to visualize the guitar and use something repetitive so it gets into your system so that you can do it nice and flowing, alternating picking is the best thing. And you can achieve it by following these same rules. All you have to do is make sure, as, as much as possible, where especially on the descending runs and things, that you, you use an even number of strikes per string. Now this will probably mean you have to learn to visualize the guitar in, in, in a completely new way. And I would suggest drawing the fretboard out and, and, and doing that. Now, I'm just gonna show you now two more things. In Gypsy Jazz, um, we use a lot of arpeggios. And I think this was mainly because Django, you know, he only used his two fingers. And so he couldn't really do scales as such. If he wanted to do a scale, you know, he would have to go that direction across the guitar. And then going back up again would become a problem. He couldn't do scales as such. He had to do mixtures, bits of scales, bits of arpeggios. Arpeggios are easier. So um, I'm going to show you a G major arpeggio. This is a classical arpeggio. It has th three notes in it. It has G, B, D, G, B, D, G, B, D. Okay? And this is how most people sort of practice them in gypsy jazz, okay? Um, I don't anymore. And I'll show you why. So down, so you go to third fret, seventh fret, now you're changing string, fifth fret, fifth fret, so you're sort of doing a little bar there. That's down, up, down, down, up. You're now on the eighth fret, sorry, ninth fret here, the little finger. Down, up, down, down, up. Index finger, you're on the D, which is on the seventh fret here. That's also a down. Onto the G, down. This is the eighth fret. Seventh fret, down again. So down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down. And repeat again, you have to jump. Down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, 
down, down. Go back and review this. I'm not going to be doing any tablature. The gypsies learn hourly. They memorise things. You should try to do that yourself as well. Okay, so go back and have a look at that. Um, now, one of the reasons that's so sort of so many downstrokes in this direction, when you write it out, you'll realise there's there's this lots of downstrokes. Um, it's because actually it's part one of the main reasons is it only has three notes. Three is an odd number. You're using this structure, this plectrum, which has two sides. It's an even number based system. This thing, and you're applying it to something which has odd no is an odd number. It's not a problem, but if you want to do that at speed, if you want to go down, it's very hard. And even some of the best, they sort of do it in a kind of stuttery sort of way, or they avoid it. They avoid it. Um, now, I'm going to show you something else. In jazz, we tend to play four note chords, not three. Four is an even number, just like your plectrum. So, the thing is, can the even numbers be brought together? Like Ricky Gervais tells you, like this. And, and can all this end in lovely music? Well, the answer is yes. Um, four note chords. Uh, a very, very common chord that's played in gypsy jazz is the sixth chord. So the major six. This means you just add in a sixth, the sixth note of the scale to the major chord. And instead of sounding like this, it sounds like this. So similar sound is a familiar sound. So here we're adding in an E, okay? G B D E G B D E G B D E. But I'm not going to practice it like that because when I go down, when I start going this way, the descending structure, I'm going to have to bounce my hand again, and I don't like doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a note in. That's an E flat, E flat, E, E flat, E. Okay, this is what it's going to sound like. And here, I'm going to add in an A. One, two, down. This is so that I start again with a down beat, with a, with a down stroke. And it means now I can repeat this. You might be able to tell it starts to become much more fluid. It's because you're marrying it up. You're allowing these two, the relationship between what you're doing on the left hand to marry up with what you're doing um, with the picking hand. Remember, what you, what you drill into your head may or may not come out when you improvise, but by doing it, you raise the probability of it coming out. And if you start out um, training to be a sprinter by hopping, you know, are you are you getting the, the the best out of your body if you're only using one leg? And you have two. So this is just a suggestion. It's just an idea. That that exercise there, um, I would uh, that's a G6 arpeggio. I would have a go at that. Now I would use a metronome. Um, to get yourself, find a speed you can do it at, memorize it first, and then try to do it just tapping your foot, then move on to a metronome. Um, there's going to be more on this, and um, more detail on, on the arpeggios and how to apply them when imp um, improvising and things like this over time. For now, if you're a beginner, this is just mechanics, this is just to get your hands working, um, to get you to sort of understand the feel of the, 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 the playing of Gypsy Jazz. And I hope it's useful. Um, this one probably will provoke a few questions, this video. Fire away. Um, I will try to answer. Okay. Uh, hit subscribe and you'll get some more soon. Um, click an ad or two. Donate to the channel that way, you see. Um, keeps me going. Um, and I'll see you soon. Take it easy. Bye-bye.